Hello and thanks for joining us at Me and My Golf TV. We are here at TaylorMade HQ in Carlsbad, California at the Kingdom Pierce, the headquarters Fantastic. for the fitting facilities. What an amazing place. In today's video we're going to be talking about the technology behind lofting up with the SLDR driver. Let's take charge of your game. Okay, so we're here with Daryl from TaylorMade. Daryl, thank you for your time. My pleasure. Oh, yeah, My pleasure. Thank you. Right, guys, you have seen these things. Number one driver on tour. There are loads of you using it. Me and Andy use it. There's hundreds of them here. It's like being a kid in a sweet shop. But today, in this video, we're talking about loft up and the science behind it. So this is the, the, the technology, the lofting up, which has actually helped you produce number one driver on tour. Great but also it's helped us get a bit more yardage and a lot of our clients and a lot of the people watching these videos. So, the floor is yours. What do these things do? Tell us about it. Well, our engineers discovered that if we took the weight that's inside the head, pulled it forward and down into the club head closer to the face, that the ball flight reduced height and the spin also reduced, which is always a big distance killer. So, by putting the weight down and forward, we've been able to create a condition that's too low in launch and too low in spin for a lot of players. So what they have to do now to get the ball in the air is increase the loft on the club. So that's why 99.9% .9 of the players that are using this driver have a half to one degree greater loft in their present driver now. So someone with an old, an old Talamade or an old whatever yeah. the driver is, that will generally spin higher than uh, say a 10 degree in, in the SLDR. Correct. So they will need to loft up, loft up. To, to actually get, uh, get that ball up in the air. There's been a lot of talk about the 17 degree launch, 1700 spin condition yeah. that makes the golf ball go farther for everybody. So that's what we try to do is create a head that gives us, get us closer to that window. So that's 17, 17, that's the sort of optimum, the sort of holy grail for holy the maximum for the distance maximum. you can right. possibly get. Right. Hard to achieve, I Hard think. to achieve. Uh, but the closer you get to that, then the, the more, so the more you're going to get from it. We may need those extra long tees, <laughs> yeah. maybe for that. <laughs> It is interesting. I know that we've had some of, I mean, some of my clients have tried this club, and when they've tried it, some have been absolutely fantastic. But some people have said that they didn't feel as though it was getting them more distance. So the first thing I say, and I don't know whether this is correct, is, well, did you have enough loft on it? Did you loft mm -hmm. up enough? And is, right. is that something that you see? When uh, every day, every day here. Okay. We end up uh, having a driver that goes farther because of the loft up. It just depends on how much loft you need. It depends on how bad their first driver was, really, too. Yeah. Um, they may. They may hit their, have a good driver the first time around, so it's not that it's not that hard to beat their distance, but it's certainly a different window they're looking yeah, at now. Yeah. Some people get scared of seeing it at so high, but when you start yeah. looking at the numbers it produces and the distance, they buy into it. I think I think loft scares a lot of a lot of, a lot of golfers because they think right, I don't want it too high because I'm going to lose distance. And yeah. I think when I first when I first got fitted with this, you know, you really see you need to see the numbers and you need to see the ball flight to actually believe that lofting up is going to give you that and I think once you see that once you see the ball flight and you see the numbers and it matches up you then have the confidence to say right I, I trust that I'm going to use a 12 degree or even a 14 degree because it's producing more distance and you know that's the real benefit then of actually going and getting fitted because you know you know there's no there's no sort of lies is there you've got the numbers there the, the science is there yeah the science well, is there it's interesting you were saying off air that a, a certain tour pro a, 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 didn't couldn't get used to seeing the face as right. much. As so you add fits. loft, you see more face. Yeah. And for the players that have not looked at a lot of loft all their career, yep. it's sometimes difficult because they think it's pointing more left, which yeah. they hate to hit. Yeah, that's a good so point. which and which it which it does really, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, that is absolutely the science of it. But we're talking small fractions right. here, right. and that difference is what it's going to give them in that launch right. up is obviously the key. And into the wind is an interesting one because someone says to me well if you want me to hit the ball up in the air like that well isn't the wind going to affect that isn't that the history behind our game though right <laughs> there we go when when the wind is in our face we always try to hit it down below the wind where there's there's still wind up there or down there but what you do these days is if you ruin your launch conditions that were once perfect by hitting it low you're going to hit it shorter and then the wind's also going to knock it back so there's no use in trying to do anything different yeah. except launch your launch yeah. it into your window that you're used to yeah. with correctly fitted driver. So if you've got the right conditions, then just play it as normal and just let the wind let hit the it. Let the wind and, do it, yeah. And you know, if you try and fight against it, you're probably going to sacrifice a bit more distance. That's correct. Okay, sounds good. Right, okay, so Andy, we're going to do a little bit of an experiment, aren't we? So we're going to have a little... We're going to uh, test these things, aren't we? we? Test our new drivers. Our drivers and make sure that they are fully lifted <laughs> up to what we need. So should we go and get some track mandate? Let's get after it. Yes. Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Okay.
Okay, so that was really interesting. We've hit a few shots and done a few tweaks here to our clubs that we've had fitted yeah. to us. And that was, I think, one of the biggest things that we found there, Daryl, was that we were actually teeing the golf ball a little bit too high. Now, you yeah, know, high in the face, yes. too high in the face. Now, too high in the face was still giving us a good flight. It was still high with low spin. But one thing that was doing is robbing us of the ball speed there. So, um, although it looked nice, we sacrificed a, a, bit, a bit of distance there yeah, as well, yeah. really. So just that tee height there um, was for me, it was a way for me to launch the golf ball in the air. So what we did actually, there, we lowered the tee height, got me some more centered strikes, but then I needed to find a better way to, to actually create slightly um, better launch conditions. So that's more technique for me. So I need to change what I'm doing to help that golf ball in the air. And then, then I can really maximize that distance again there. I assume it's you, Peter, think, yeah, well. absolutely. It's interesting that the biggest gain we got was a six mile per hour gain, six wasn't miles it? An hour so, how much is that worth in, in yardage? 12 to 15, maybe? Yeah, well, it's two and a half miles uh, per yard, or sorry, two and a half yards per mile. Hour, okay. So yeah, yeah. You're okay. looking at 15 yards, 15 yards just by ball speed alone. It was a big difference. Just by teeing the ball a little bit lower. Yeah. Just by getting fitted. And I think that's the main thing that we've looked at here. You know, these guys, they are experts. They can, you know, suddenly we're hitting shots, we're saying, tee a little higher, do this, crank this, change this, and we're just, we're standing there being told what to do and I think you know the, the, suddenly the, the results were getting better and better yeah. and I think that's the key that you guys offer that you know with this facility so I think the big thing is you know if you are if you do want an SLDR go to the TaylorMade Performance Lab just google it just stick it in there go to the website and have a look see where your nearest one is and I think you can really get some good gains on your drives and even if you've got one of these already is it something you can still go and get checked out and, Absolutely. and fitted we'll so guarantee the extra yard you come and get fitted <laughs> guarantee you've got him you've got him word you've got him his word there <laughs> Okay, yeah, great. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that, guys. Again, big thank you, Daryl, there. Really Pleasure. appreciate your time. Thanks for And time. really appreciate you helping Come us back. out. So hopefully this there will perform better when I take this on the next few days. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks again to Telemade at the Kingdom. Great facility here. We'll see you next time on Me and My Golf TV. Thanks, guys.